What's going on everyone? Isaiah Henry here from First Position Real Estate. And as always, I help government employees invest in real estate so they can build wealth and retire early. Today we had on Ashton Lambert on our Instagram Live. It was a great episode. Now I'm not gonna lie, Ashton is my guy, Mr. Money Man. He helps me out with all things financing and it was amazing to get him on the live. Today we talked about some differences between underwriting, what a mortgage agent is, some myths and misconceptions, and other ways that real estate investors can scale and grow. It's a great episode, tons of value, and I'd like to give a special thanks for Ashton for joining us. Go check out the episode and let me know what you think. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video for more real estate investing content. Have a great one, guys. There, oh, there he is. Look at this. Look at this guy. Oh, he's pondering. He's pondering. Somebody. That's, somebody. that's my guy. That's my guy. What's going on, bro? How are you? Not so much. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Man, this is long overdue. Should have had you on probably the first, second episode. Uh, this is the guy, the one and only. You don't need nobody else. The lead everyone else. This is the only guy you need right here, Mr. Ashton Lambert. Ashton, why don't you give us like a 30-second overview? Uh, what's going on with you in terms of real estate mortgages? What should people know? Uh, yeah, I think it's no secret right now. Just real estate market, mortgage market in general. Obviously, uh, turbulence to say the least. So um, just doing my best, man, to like, make sure I'm there for clients, constantly navigating, constantly checking in with lenders, constantly checking in on the economy, just making sure everyone I interact with, friends, family, clients, um, are getting the best advice possible to kind of help navigate uh, the storm that we're in. Awesome, man. Awesome. And I'm telling you, this guy right here, everyone, the customer service you're going to get out of uh, Ashton is worlds beyond anything I know. Like, you know, I, I'm a big customer service guy myself. And every time, uh, you know, Ashton and I talk business, he goes above and beyond. So I appreciate that. Ashton, I've got three questions for you this morning. If it's cool with you, I'd love to dive in. Fire away. Awesome, bro. Um, so first question, what is the difference between an underwriter and an actual mortgage agent? Because I think the terms are used synonymously, but I know you've made uh, some identifications where they're actually different. Yeah. So an underwriter, like when you actually buy a property or uh, maybe submit or apply for a refinance file to a lender, um, Scotiabank, TD, RBC, et cetera, they have an underwriting hub and an underwriting department that actually reviews your file. So those people are responsible, like an underwriter is a financial expert um, who is responsible for assessing the risk associated with that lender giving that borrower a loan. So that's specifically uh, the definition of what an underwriter is. Okay, so that's on the lender side. Um, mortgage agent wise, a lot of mortgage teams have their own underwriting hub as well. Cause let's say Isaiah, um, wants to buy a property, wants to get pre-approved. Well, someone needs to underwrite it to make sure that when they submit it to a lender later, that those underwriters will approve it. Right. Um, so the good mortgage agents, the ones that have teams as well, like they have, um, most of the time staff that is actually, uh, specializing in underwriting files. Okay. Um, but a mortgage agent themselves, like they're a commission-based um, professional, they act as the middleman between um, the lender and the borrower, make sure that the borrower is getting the right device, getting the right product, et cetera. Um, but tying those in together, I think it's important, like any mortgage agent, maybe they're solo, they're on their own. I think it's important to maybe have some underwriting experience as well. Um, you don't really get that if you're just kind of going solo on yourself. So making sure you have a good team in your corner, making sure you maybe you get a mentor as well. Um, and having an underwriting experience will, will likely result in success for, for a lot of mortgage agents. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now I'm going to let you plug yourself a little bit here. What is some of the value that you add as a mortgage agent from being a previous underwriter? Um, yeah, man. So for me, like uh, trajectory of, of where I've landed now, for those that don't know, like I started an admin um, for a high performing brokerage about nine years ago. I'm, I'm getting old. Uh, about nine years ago, I graduated to an underwriting role about four years ago. Um, and then I um, graduated myself to a, a full time uh, solo mortgage agent within the last year. Um, and then for me, I, I'm proud of this stat. I say it a lot. The average mortgage agent will do about 25 to 30 transactions a year. The average underwriter will see hundreds to thousands of transactions a year. So I'm um, very grateful for my time being an underwriter, allowed me to see thousands of files and make that transition uh, to a solo mortgage agent pretty seamlessly. Awesome, man. And I, you know, just being from me, like I've seen the value you're able to bring there, whether you're speaking with other people across your social and as well as, you know, files that we've worked on, that underwriting experience is so underrated and so valuable. So I, I love that you're, you're able to bring that to the table. I'll jump to the second question uh, here. 
sorry, they're over here. Um, uh, if I have a variable rate product, something like a HELOC or a variable rate uh, mortgage, what are some of my options now in this current market to maybe solidify, sure up those payments? Am I stuck in this variable product forever? Am I like at risk, um, like to literally losing my shirt? Or are there some options out there for those kind of individuals? Um, yeah, so those in variable rate products right now, obviously, um, mostly everyone has seen a massive jump to their payment, whether you have an adjustable variable rate mortgage where your payment changes or you have a static one where the payment doesn't change. We've now hit uh, what's called the trigger point because we've seen so many interest rate hikes. So everyone who has a, a variable rate mortgage, they've seen their payment increase. Um, unfortunately, the main options that are advertised are converting to a fixed mortgage to get some stability with your payment. Uh, well, unfortunately, those fixed rates are about the same as where variable rates are, if not higher. So borrowers aren't going to see stability in actually just switching their payments to fixed. Um, so what um, approach I'm taking with people is focus on um, your overall monthly expenditures. And what I mean by that is maybe there's an opportunity um, to take your variable rate mortgage and move it to another lender. And while you're doing that, consolidate a car loan, um, a line of credit a home equity line of credit. Um, so overall, like you're not going to see a massive decrease in your mortgage payment, but you're going to see if you consolidate other products via a refinance, a decrease in your overall monthly spending um, slash budgeting, which will kind of help outweigh these interest rate hikes that we've seen. There you go. See, there you go again, offering amazing customer service. You're looking at like clients from like a totality approach because some people will just give you the advice like, hey, jump into a fix, like lock up your payment and like that's all you get versus yeah. you'll come from a perspective like, okay, you know, that might not be the best and only option. Let's look at your whole situation and let's find something globally that gets you to where you want to go. So uh, that's uh, that's great there. Yeah. Yeah, man. And even like um, not knocking the banks that like they are just trained to do this. A lot of them are calling borrowers and like they, they do want to help the people that they have. Um, but they really just say, Hey, like here's the fixed rate author. We'll give you some stability with your payment, but making sure you're working with someone who actually assesses like your entire profile as a whole and maybe moves your mortgage to another lender, gets rid of a car, gets rid of a line of credit, et cetera. Um, that's where you're going to see the actual relief uh, in your overall monthly expenses. Awesome, man. That's good stuff. I love that, man. Number three for you. Um, this is a little off the dome here. So what are the three biggest myths or misconceptions that you hear that you see from new investor clients? Um, number one, man, I think is needing 20% down to invest in real estate. Yeah. Um, that, that's probably the biggest one that I see because, I mean, again, the common knowledge is if you want to buy a rental property, you need 20% down. Yeah. And it's true. You do. Um, however, and you're obviously you're, you're aware of this, um, the term house hacking, a lot of people can get into a property as long as you are occupying that property on closing, whether it's a, a single family, a duplex, a triplex, if you are occupying that property on closing, you can put down 5%. Um, so a lot of people that I've worked with over the years, I've seen them scale up by, by buying a property, maybe adding a unit to it, maybe buying a duplex off the bat. Um, and living in that unit and getting it done with as little as 5% down. And then over the years, um, as the story starts to make more sense and equity grows, et cetera, um, people level up and they maybe move out of that property and rent it out fully and buy another one. Um, or they take out money, they refinance, and they buy a rental with 20% down. There's many different scenarios you can go. Um, but really, those scenarios start with just being able to take action with 5% down, which, uh, which is a big win because not everyone has 20% sitting around, right? Exactly, exactly. I feel that's one of the strategies that, you know, I wish I explored earlier. Now, you know, a little bit more, you know, intermediate to the advanced side of things. Uh, a house hack, it's not that it doesn't make sense. It just impacts where I want to go. But I wish I would have done it on the back end, like early, because, man, that would have changed the trajectory. And I tell everybody, like, stop trying to do all this crazy, like, literally 5% down, go get yourself a house, house hack it, and then move from there. It's like a, a crazy strategy, uh, crazy strategy. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Any other things, any other uh, misconceptions or myths that you, you see come up? Uh, number two, man, um, you would know this best. So you'll love this one. But uh, people often think like they need slash should invest in the town that they live in. Right. Um, I, I'm in Hamilton um, and in the surrounding GTA as well. We know prices are, are bonkers, to say the least. Um, so a lot of people, if you have the right power team and you can probably speak to a lot of the followers that you have, if you have the right power team, 
Um, you get a good realtor in a different area. You get a good mortgage agent who can service all of Canada. You get a property manager who can look at the property for you. Like maybe you can buy up north. Maybe you can buy in other areas and pockets where you can grab duplexes or triplexes for 350K. Yeah. Um, as, a, as opposed to a triplex in Hamilton for 900K, right? Um, you don't always need physical accessibility to the property. You get a property manager a couple hundred bucks a month and they monitor that property for you. Um, knock on wood, you're, you're sitting pretty from afar, right? So um, not being laser focused on investing in your area and maybe taking uh, your investing endeavors out to up north. Timmins, you know, Sudbury, Windsor, they're all great pockets where I've seen a lot of people be successful. Um, so people should be exploring that, uh, I think is, uh, another kind of angle, um, to hit on. I love that, man. I, I love that. Yeah. Obviously like I'm a long distance investor. That's uh, kind of the bread and butter, what we do uh, at uh, FPRE. So that's, uh, that's awesome there. And, you know, just being able to speak to it from a mortgage side, you know, maybe adds validity. Cause a lot of people are like, Oh, like I, I can't put all the pieces together. I'm like, you don't have to put the whole team together. Like once, like in one sitting, like you know, slowly add until the team's there, right? It's not like they built uh, the, the that Patriot dynasty in one season, right? It took them a couple seasons to add the pieces until they had the team. And then once everything was there, you're just running at full speed and no one can stop you, right? So it's uh, it's amazing there. Uh, any last misconceptions before we wrap it up here? Uh, yeah, last one, man, is people, I think, often zeroing in on like, hey, maybe I'm on my own or um, I don't have a spouse to help me or I don't have anyone to help me. Like, then they feel like they can only have options on their own or take on real estate investing on their own. Um, again, falls back in line to like just networking. We're lucky in this day and age with social media where we have um, tons of real estate investors who will give you their time. They'll share yeah. that knowledge. There's a lot of events you can go to. There's a lot of people that are willing to partner up and buy properties together and help accelerate their wealth that way. So um, if you're on your own, you're maybe working with limited capital. Um, you're a bit weary about investing on your own. Um, sometimes I tell people no spouse, no house, but that rule doesn't always apply to, uh, to real estate investing. So um, have conversations, um, chat with other like-minded investors, chat with people that have done what you want to do um, and maybe partner up with people and, and see the returns that way. So. Awesome, man. Well, hey, those are some great uh, myth busting with uh, with Ashton. Hey, maybe you should start your own podcast, Myth Busting with Ashton, because I would tune in 100%. All right, I'll put that on the list. Uh, so put that on the long list, long list. <laughs> Ashton, as we wrap up here today, thank you so much for joining me. Obviously, you know you're my guy, so I really appreciate it. Where can people find out more about you if they need to learn, if they got to get some loans or they need service? Where can they find out more about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm big on social media. So anyone, if, uh, if they want to give me a follow and uh, they like what I do, feel free to reach out anytime with questions. Um, mortgage advice is, is always free. So if you have a good broker, chat with them. If you're ever looking for advice, um, if you want to reach out to me as well, you can via Instagram. Um, so that would be the main uh, kind of connection there, man. And uh, yeah, I work at Synergy Mortgage Group. You can Google us as well. All my con con contact information is on the website there too. Awesome, man. And I will be the biggest client referral. If you ever, anyone has any questions about Ashton or his services, come haul at your boy. I will give him five, six, seven, or 10 stars, whatever your metric is. So Ashton, thank you so much for joining us, man. It's been a pleasure to have like so much knowledge dropped in terms of the mortgage industry as well as everything you're doing there. So obviously for me, thank you as a client and I thank you for joining us today. And Isaiah from First Position Real Estate, we're signing off here today with Ashton. Hope you have yourself a great day, man. And thanks for joining us. Thanks, Isaiah. Appreciate it. Take care, Ross.